Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take a texture file and turn it into a 3D geometry. Let's get started. Over here at Polyhaven. Uh, they are not sponsoring this video. Anyways, Polyhaven, all their stuff's free and you can use it. Over here on textures, I went over to textures and I just had a look at textures. You'll notice that all of these textures here have displacement going on. It's a material that creates not just like a bump, which is like fake depth, but like real depth. It actually makes these rocks see like they're popping up off the edge. Uh, this is something that you can do in cycles and it will be something that we can do in Eevee soon with Eevee Next once that drops. But while we're waiting, there is a way to do a sort of in-between version of this effect. You can pick any of these materials. I went with something like this mud crack because we're making this like a, an actual texture we're gonna see up close. You wanna go for a really high resolution. So 8K, we're gonna download that. So this is what you get when you plug all those in. You know, you get this cool image, but it doesn't look great up close. You can see it's flat. Well, we get this other texture file, the displacement. Bam, there you go. So you can see it's using this displacement file to basically create 3D geometry. So how is this happening? And more importantly, how is this happening in Eevee? Let's hide the plane and I'll create a new one here. So I'll come right here and we're gonna shift A mesh plane. I'll just scale it up. So I'm just going to create a new material um, and I will grab uh, an image texture and I will go ahead and just use this little drop down to grab the different um, images that we want. So we've got the diffusion and we've got the uh, normal duplicate and we've got, where is it? The roughness, all right. So roughness, we're gonna plug into the roughness um, and the diffusion, we'll plug into the, the base color. Let's see the mud cracked normal. We're gonna create a normal map node and we'll plug the color into the color. There we go. And the normal into the normal. So now we get some nice bumpiness, but you can see very, very flat. Um, I might scale it down a little bit more. So the idea is what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this displacement map. Oh yeah, let me show you the displacement map. So I'll shift you one more time and there it is, the displacement. So let's have a look at what this looks like on its own. So I'm gonna plug this into the emission. So you can see what it is. It's like a black and white height map, basically. And so the white values represent things that are really high and the dark values represent stuff that's really low. So we need to translate this into something that has depth. So the way we're gonna cheat this in Eevee is we're going to create uh, an array that takes our plane and duplicates it like 100 times, 150 times and moves each of those duplicates up just a little bit. And then we're gonna create a shader that will take sort of these levels of uh, gradient of from black to white and create little slices and print and print those slices on each of those different planes. So based on how high they are. So we gotta do a couple of tricky things to pull that off. So first up, let's add an array. So I'm gonna go over here, add modifier, add array, and um, I'm gonna set my count to 150. So we're gonna turn off relative offset and uh, we're gonna turn on constant offset and we're gonna open this up. We're gonna set the X to zero in the distance and the Z, we're gonna make this go up, right? So, but really tiny amounts. So like 0 0.001, uh, actually that makes it go down. So we're gonna make this negative if I want it to go up. So now you can see we get this really dense, uh, almost like a cube, right? Um, but it's actually just the plane over and over and over and over again, stacked up on top of itself. So now that we've got this, we need to figure out how high each of these pieces are with just the material. So let's get crazy. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we'll just leave, um, we'll leave all this stuff off for now so we can just focus on uh, how this looks um, on its own. And uh, we can leave this going into the emission so we can see you know, these, this detail really clearly. And we're gonna be using the alpha channel for this. So let's create the object info node. Now what this node does is this gives us information about the object the material is applied to. So uh, this particular object right here, you can see the origin is right there, that little orange dot. And that is the position of this object, right? And you can see here the values under the orange box, we've got the actual number uh, numbers representing the position. So if I plug this into the emission, uh, it's gonna give me this, this bright color. And this is basically, you know, representing where it is in 3D space. As I move it, the color changes. So, you know, it goes really red, goes really blue. Think about this as R, G, and B, so red, green, and blue. So that's what's, it's translating the positional values into color values. That's why it's, you know, changing colors as it changes position. So to simplify things, I've kind of got this scene set up more off to the side. We're just gonna zero everything out uh, for now. I'll actually zero the rotation as well. This will make it a little bit easier for us to parse what's going on. As we move up on the Z, you can see we're gonna get more and more blue, right? 
It's also starting to glow. So I've moved it all the way up to 100 on the Z. So it's glowing blue and it's like glowing so much now it's blooming out, right? So that means we have 100 on the Z and translated into color. It makes it like this glowy, crazy object. Let's pop that back to zero. So that's kind of the clue of how we're gonna make this thing work. As the blue value increases, that, you know, that way we know things are getting higher. So now let's take this and let's start to, to split it up into slices. Now we're gonna do that with a math operation. It's because we need to compare like how high this is with this, this depth image, right? So let's grab a math node and we're gonna switch this from add. We're gonna to go to compare. Now compare will take two values and then you have this thing called epsilon. And it's basically like, you know, how much, uh, like if the epsilon is zero, then it's gonna compare the two values and it's only gonna give you a one if they are an exact match. The epsilon gives you sort of like a, you know, a gray area in between where it's like, well, if it's within 0.5, either way, it'll still give you a one. Otherwise it'll give you a zero. So that's how this works. So we're gonna compare the location as the first value, okay? And we're gonna compare that with the uh, the color of our displacement as the second. And we'll just keep epsilon at 0.5. But now we're seeing this thing represented you know, in color, right? As we're moving it around because there's red, there's green, there's blue. We only really wanna look at the Z. We just wanna look at the height because we're not trying to create a shader that's super complex that can know if something's pointing off to the left or the right or you know whatever. We're not doing this so it works on a sphere. We're just doing it so it works on a flat plane. It's just looking at up on the Z. So we just wanna look at the Z value. So let's do uh, separate X, Y, Z. We'll drop that here. We'll take the location, pipe it in, and then we'll just take the Z value and we'll look at that. So we're just comparing how high, how high up is this thing? And uh, at, you know if it's right at, the origin right at the, 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 the grid, it's gonna be zero, right? Because think this is zero here. So it's gonna be pure black. It's sort of the RGB equivalent, right? So it's gonna match how much of this is pure black. Where does it match? Does it match? If it does, it's gonna send out um, a yes. And it's gonna, we're gonna get a slice that is just that value of where they match. As it goes up, you know, it gets higher and higher to one, for example, as we get up closer to one on the Z, it's gonna match the brighter areas on this displacement map. I'm gonna plug this into the alpha. I'll turn my emission up so that it's still bright in this space. We can see it, but you can see even though the emission's bright, everything's black. That means we need to set up uh, alpha channels for EV. So remember alpha is a separate thing. It represents transparency and we have to set it up separately in EV to work. So if you come over to the options panel on the side of your shader, we're gonna get these drop downs for blend mode and shadow mode. And we wanna set this either to alpha hashed or alpha blend. We're gonna do alpha hashed and we'll set the shadow mode to alpha hashed as well and we will just leave that as is. So now you can see it's disappeared. Our object isn't showing at all. And why is that? Well, it's because the location is zero and it's comparing, all right. Uh, oh, and also because the epsilon's plugged into something which we don't want. Um, I'll put that back to zero just for demonstration purposes. So location is at zero. There's nothing in this image. Remember when we plugged in the emission? It, it, there was nothing that was black. It was all like just tones of gray. So there's nothing in this image that's black. So the fact that we're down at the zero point means that nothing matches. So we're not gonna get anything in the alpha. Everything is returning zero. But if I grab Z and drag it up, hold down shift, you can get that little flash there because it's so small. So let's turn the epsilon up a little bit and that'll help us out. All right, so there we go. Now you can see we're getting something. As this moves up in Z space, we're getting different parts of the displacement. Now this is kind of cool in itself, right? This is kind of a cool effect. If we turn off the emission, you know, you can see we've got this really cool, like organic looking craziness. So there's some neat things going on here. Let's bring the mud kind of into a range where we can, uh, you know, sort of begin to match it to the range of our location because, you know, we're not very high, right? We're only, if I go back down to zero, um, like we're only really going up to like 0.1 or something. So we need to scrunch this thing way down. We don't need it to be from one to zero. So I'm gonna use a, um, let's use a map range node and let's drop it here on this. We're gonna expand the range of our uh, location value. So from min is zero, we're gonna keep that, but the two max, we don't wanna to go to one. I wanna say like, what's the highest this thing's gonna go? Well, the highest it's gonna go is like, like 0.1, I think maybe, or even 0.01, something like that. You notice that it's sort of uniform. It's not really like tapering off, right? It's sort of giving us the same value across the entire stack. Why is that? 
Well, the reason is we're just using the location of the object. And the location of the object stays exactly the same for all of our different slices when we're using an array. Now, if each of these were separate objects, then it would work technically. So we could um, like apply this array and then separate them out and let them be just 150 separate objects. But that's a bit bulky and hard to work with. So what we need is something that's going to give us a bit more information. We actually need the information about the polygon itself. So the actual plane, the face and geometry, we need to know where that is. So maybe not the whole object's location. What about just the location of the face itself? So how could we get that? Well, there's another node called the geometry node. And this one gives us the position. And it's different from this location. This is the object's location in 3D space, no matter how many faces you have or how big the geometry is. It's always the origin. This one is the position of every face on the object. So it will behave differently for every face on the entire object. So we want to get the position of every face. So let's try swapping that out. I'll pop that into here. Now we're going to get a different result. What's going on here? Well, what we're doing is we're getting a different value for each of our 150 different faces. So let's let's take this uh, from max. So now you can see if I drag my from min, I'm just kind of finding where the values start to work. So I'm going to take my from min, uh, down, it looks like negative 0.04 is working well for me. And I can bring this one up until it starts to reach the top. Or I can also just adjust this till it feels like it's high enough, you know, for the realism that I want. And bam, there we go. So you can see the difference between these two nodes, the geometry and the object info and how they're going to give us a totally different result. So it's really cool. Now, bear in mind, this is only working going straight up on the Z. So this only really works for an object that's flat. You know, if we put this uh, on a sphere, um, it's it's not going to work because it's only looking at going up and it'll just make everything go up off the sphere. So um, bear that in mind. Now, there, here's ways of using this and using these nodes and using this kind of logic to create any more complex node graph with more math that would actually take into account the normal direction of every face and figure all that out so that it would displace correctly. But then you also have to combine that with another system that's going to duplicate the faces out along the normal it just starts getting a bit messy and you might as well just wait for the next version of Blender where we're going to get EV next and have this built in anyway. So at that point, don't worry about it. But this is still pretty cool. So let's go ahead and slap on those other materials. Uh, so I'm going to take my normal, plug that back in. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this and you learned a lot about how to think about, um, you know, 3D space within a shader. Hope that the object info node and the geometry info node clicks for you and that you'll be able to use that in your own shaders going forward. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial and please check out the Patreon and consider supporting this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me about the tutorials you'd like to see. What would you like me to work on next? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Woo!